go. Who? What do you mean, who? Didn't you see him? Oh, come on. Whoever he was, Miss Westbrook, he never got inside the safe. The metal's got a few scorch marks on it, but uh, it looks like the lock wasn't even touched. No thanks to you. How did he get past security? Uh, we're working on it. Well, work on it on your own time, because you are fired. Alana, we don't even know how it happened yet. Stu's worked for us for five years. Look, I don't care how it happened. It's time for a change. Alana, I have those contracts for your signature. Uh, later, they Scott. You were going to choose the girl for the national advertising campaign. Oh, not now. Oh, Lana, this is the third day they've been here. All right. All right. I think we can do better. Girls, I'm really sorry. Thank you, ladies. If there are any future opportunities, I have your numbers. Somewhere out there, there is a girl with the perfect look. Well, at least the formula is safe. That's the important thing. Yeah. And it is going to remain safe. That's why I'm taking it home. Home? Oh, Lana, you can't do that. The formula is too valuable. Well, you can't stop me. As CEO, I have a responsibility to the company and to your stockholders. You're going to do what you're told, Barbara, just like everyone else around here. You are constantly undermining my authority. If you won't let me do the job you hired me to do, then why don't you let me out of my contract? So you can become the CEO at Winston Cosmetics? Who told you? Oh, Scott is a very efficient and well-connected executive assistant. I want out, Alana. I want out. Oh, I understand. I understand Winston offered you $200,000 a year plus bonuses. Very generous. Too bad you already have an ironclad contract with me. Mrs. Westbrook? Dr. Shell, as I'm sure you've already heard, there was a break-in last night. An attempt was made to steal the ingenue formula. Yes, they didn't get it. I know, but uh, I'm going to take sole responsibility for its security. That's why I'd like you to turn over all your notes and files on the project. I, I don't understand. You don't have to. Just open the cabinet. Well, Mrs. Westbrook. Doctor. Now. Mrs. Westbrook, don't do this to me. These files represent years of work. They're irreplaceable. Without them, I would never be able to reconstruct the formula. You don't have to. I told you, I'm going to make sure it's safe. Lana, I did not think it is fair that you retain sole possession. Doctor, I own that patent. And you developed the Ingenue formula as a salaried employee under my supervision. If you don't know what that means, I will be very happy to have my attorney explain it to you. All right. The cabinet. Everybody out. Thank you. Scott, I want you to call a press conference. Alana, I don't think the press is going to be that interested in a simple robbery attempt. Oh, I have a much bigger story than that. I'm going to tell them things even you don't know. In fact, this is a product so revolutionary that the competition actually sent burglars to try to steal it. 
Fortunately, they didn't get it. Are you telling us people are committing industrial espionage just to get their hands on some new wrinkle cream? Oh, no, 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 no. This is much more than that. This is an entirely new discovery that I've developed and I've tested on myself. I call it Ingenue. Remember that name. You know how most women lie about their ages? I know I always did. Well, today I'm finally going to tell you the truth. In fact, I'm going to show you copies of my birth certificate and my family records to prove it. Are you going to tell us that you're really 20? No, no, au contraire. Janice? Is this for real? Check it out for yourself. The original of that birth certificate is on file in Porterville, Colorado, where I was born. 62 years ago. Alana, what are the ingredients in this new wrinkle cream? Wouldn't you like to know? Well, that's certainly a triumph for you, my darling. Oh, thank you, Arthur. Uh, uh, please sit down. You know how I hate to have people read over my shoulder. Oh, shoulders. I'm sorry. Yes, you're right. I'm sorry. You know, I can't help feeling concerned about this formula being right here in the house, particularly after they tried to break into your office. Well, the formula's in my safe. You, of all people, should know how hard it is to get into my bedroom. Oh, come on, damn it. Uh, Alana, that isn't funny. Arthur, I'm talking about the security system. You have gotten so short-tempered. You know, I used to be able to turn to you for, for help, for guidance, for support. Yeah, for money. It was never just the money, Arthur. But now all I get from you is whining. Snide little rat. Who? Harley Griswold. This time he has gone too far. What did he say? Uh, never mind. Eric, have my car brought around in five minutes. Yes, ma'am. Are you going? Wait, the caterer is coming with designs for the birthday cake. Uh, that's all right, that's all right. They know what I want. And uh, uh, don't bother to wait up for me. I'll be late. You have something to do? Yes, sir. Then do it. Yes, sir. Harley, darling, are you talking about me? Alana, my angel, you don't look a day older and considering the vital statistics, that's quite an achievement. You know Beverly Courtney, don't you? How are you, darling? Harley, I want to talk to you. I'm so serious. I wonder if she's miffed because I'm having lunch with another of my lovely admirers. Oh, Harley, you're such a tease. Tease isn't exactly the word I had in mind. Have you read Shirley's column today? I have. You're in it. And what did I say this time? Nothing terrible, I hope. Harley's always saying terrible things. Beverly, darling, shut up. According to a well-connected writer friend, a certain cosmetic queen's dramatic revelation of her true age couldn't have come at a better time. Rumor has it that recent financial drains have left her beauty empire teetering on the verge of bankruptcy. You don't think that I tell Shirley about your financial problems, do you? Let's see, a well-connected writer friend... Why, Harley, I do believe you are the only writer I know. And you are certainly the only person who knew that I was having financial problems. That is, of course, until this came out. Alana, I swear I never said a word to Shirley. At least not that I can recall. Harley, you know, you drink too much. And darling, when you drink too much, you talk too much. Alana, my darling, what can I do to win your forgiveness? You can drop dead, darling. Beverly, I do hope you'll think twice before you tell him any secrets. You never know what might turn up in print. Darling? 
lunchtime. I'm starving. I don't believe you. You couldn't be 62. Oh, I don't look too bad, do I? For my age. That cream is really a miracle. You must rub it all over your body. Doesn't it ever bother you to be sleeping with someone almost old enough to be your grandmother? I haven't even thought about it. Do you want to know what I do think about? Why don't you tell me? was a very effective little job you did the other night. Well, you said you wanted the break in attempt to look realistic. You were right to get your valuables out of that safe. The security around here stinks. Yeah, you certainly proved that to my satisfaction. Uh, what about that other little matter I asked you to look into? Well, it took some digging, but I think I found what you were looking for. It's not going to make you happy. Oh, well, you'd be surprised what makes me happy. Oh, everything all right for the party tonight? I think so. Great. Sure you won't come? Uh-huh. Chicken. <laughs> Have a happy birthday. Oh, thanks. Della. Oh. How's the new boat? How's your knee? Wet. The office has been trying to reach us for days. They finally got a message through to the store down the road. Important? I don't think so. Somebody named Westbrook wanted you to go to a birthday party tonight. I uh, said you couldn't go. Who's Westbrook? We went to law school together. Almost two years. You never mentioned him. Oh, five years out of law school, he went into business. Made a fortune. We were good friends. I haven't seen him since 77. How'd it go out there today? You were right. We were bitten to death. I didn't catch a thing. We're out of this tournament. And yesterday the boat sank. Perry wrecked his knee and we lost all our fish. We can go home as far as I'm concerned. Those are mine. <laughs> I just pray that when I get to be your age... Darling, don't worry. Anjana will be out soon. I do hope you can afford to wait. Alana, my angel, I've been calling you for days, but you're never home. And I never will be home to you again, Harley. In fact, you weren't invited. Get out of my house. I was getting around that I'm no longer on your list. You've no idea the harm it's doing me. I couldn't be more thrilled. Oh, darling, for God's sake, you're ruining me. Be a shame. Eric! Eric, Mr. Griswold is having trouble finding the door. Please show him out. Mr. Griswold, if you please, sir. This way. Darling, I want to talk to you. Arthur. Arthur. You must show me your guns, you know. I've been learning to shoot, and I want to ask your advice on what I should buy. Well, you know, I only uh, have target guns. Well, uh, what did you use in the Olympics? That's the Walter 22 right there. That's a silhouette uh, pistol. 
Alana, I would like a copy of my notes. Now? Alana, this is intolerable, please. And impossible. We'll have to talk about it tomorrow. Alana? Tomorrow. Alana. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Lana. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. Happy I was thinking, uh... Oh, Arthur, darling, it's so late. Not tonight. Uh, well, good night, darling. Uh, happy birthday. Thanks. Lana? Lana, did I hear you mention having breakfast with the uh, Esmonds today? Are you awake? I'm, I'm coming in. How long have you worked here? I've been in the employment of Mrs. Westbrook for seven years. 
from what you've been telling me, it sounds like you don't like Mr. Westbrook. He didn't treat Mrs. Westbrook very well. Your name again? Eric. Eric, hang tight. I'll get back to you. As you wish, sir. Officer, I need to talk to you for a moment. I found something I think you're going to be interested in. Mr. Westbrook. Mr. Westbrook, Lieutenant Brock, please. Mind if I ask you a question or two, sir? I don't mind. Okay, to begin with, looks like a thief broke into your house, stole one of your guns, went upstairs and surprised your wife while she was putting away her jewels in the bedroom safe. Bang. He shoots her, grabs the jewels, and splits. And while all of this was going on, my guys tell me, you never heard a thing. Well, I take a sleeping pill, Lieutenant. It's very effective. I wish I had heard something. I might have been able to do something. Might have been able to do something. Lieutenant! Excuse me, sir. an update, sir, on what we think happened because something is not quite kosher. Uh, I understand. Well, to begin with, sir, your wife's jewels were found in a mailbox just down the street from your house. But we didn't find the formula for your wife's anti-aging cream, the one that Dr. Shell told us about. Now, that means that the thief, if there was a thief, wanted the formula and not the jewels. Which means that the thief, if there was a thief, knew precisely what he was looking for. Why do you keep saying if there was a thief? I mean, somebody broke in here. <laughs> Mr. Westbrook, nobody broke into this house, sir. What about that window? Ah, Mr. Westbrook, the window, broken from the inside out. You see, the thief, your wife's killer, wanted us to think he broke into the house, but we think he was inside all along. Inside? Inside, Mr. Westbrook. In fact, we think he's still here. And we think we'll be able to prove it. Prove what? The butler says you and your wife, well, you didn't get along. Would you like to tell us about it? You get started as soon as possible. I think you should change lures and fish the center of the lake. I was very comfortable on the dock. Oh, come on, Della. You were lucky. How about some coffee? Right away. You know, you really should get in a few hours before the sun gets too hot. Oh, Ken, Della knows what she's doing. Take it from me. <laughs> she will win the tournament. Mr. Mason, got a message for you. Head of the firm is there. Thank you, Admiral. What is this, another invitation to a party? <laughs> Not quite. Arthur Westbrook's wife was shot last night. And he's been charged with murder. The lawyer took care of the hearing. I took care of bail. Hey, Barry. I can't thank you enough. Too early for thanks. According to the police report, your butler told Lieutenant Brock you had violent arguments with the Lanham. Oh, damn that man. He'll be a witness for the prosecution. It's too bad you didn't get along with him. Eric is a butler. I pay him to get along with me. How long were you and Alana married? Oh, almost ten years. Did you argue? Well, of course we argued. Every couple argues, for God's sake. Eric says quite a few of your arguments concern money, Alana's money. Alana's money? <laughs> I gave her every cent I have. It was a lot. I just wanted to get some of it back out of the business. Arthur, do you realize that wanting your money back is enough motive for the police? What? They haven't found the murder weapon, but they did find the shell casing, and your fingerprints were on it. Well, they stole my bullets. 
We can't prove that. The DA does think he can prove you killed Alana to get the formula for her face cream. He'll claim you knew the formula was in her safe, and only you could have faked the break-in to throw off suspicion. Hey, what, what are you trying to do, get me more upset? I'm under arrest for murder. Thanks, Don. Sit down. My partner, Ken Melansky, is going to visit the crime scene with Lieutenant Brock in the morning. Before you leave here, I want you to go over all the pictures from the party with Della. But right now, I'd like you to tell me about this cream your wife invented. It really worked? Oh, yes. Arthur, how old was Alana? I haven't the slightest idea. Morning, Lieutenant. Morning, Miss Molansky. Sorry I'm late. Going in. What do we got? Excuse me. Mind if I take a look around? Who are you? My name is Molansky. Ken Molansky. I work with Perry Mason. Mason, the lawyer? You a lawyer too, Molansky? <laughs> Don't tell me you got something against attorneys. Ever know a cop who didn't? Who said you could be in here? Lieutenant Brock. He's outside. Ask him. I will. In the meantime, don't go anywhere. Don't touch anything. Clear? You're not going to find anything, Malansky. Forensic swept the place clean yesterday. Mm -hmm. I had to tell your investigator that she acted like I was trying to sneak out with vital evidence. What investigator? Tall, blonde, nice looking. She was going to go look for you. She was just here. Just now? Yeah, just now. She just drove away. It wasn't one of yours? The only woman on my squad is Lenny Rodriguez, and she ain't no blonde. She had an ID, Lieutenant Darius Quinn. I wrote her name and license number in the law. Turn the one, it's a dead end. This is not another one of Mason's scams, is it, Melansky? Getting us running around in circles looking for some mystery woman? Give me a break, Lieutenant. Perry and I don't work that way. <laughs> you don't know that by now. After you. Arthur and I went through every picture from the party. These three knew the formula was in the house. William Shell? Mm -hmm. The chemist who developed Ingenue. Barbara Fox? Alana's CEO. And Scott Collins? Her executive assistant. You're holding one back. Harley Griswold. Arthur said that he and Alana had a terrible fight the night of the party. Fight? About what? He only knew that Harley crashed the party and Alana threw him out. Well, Mr. Molansky. Sorry I'm late. I was downtown with Lieutenant Brock. He traced our mystery woman's license plate. Rental car, phony name, dead end. She's evidently a professional. Professional enough to murder? I'm starving. Have you ordered yet? No, we've been waiting for you. Waiter! Arthur identified four suspects today. Now, tomorrow... You want me to check out that break-in at Alana's offices because it's connected. You're finished with everything else. Everything jibes with the official police report. Well, Rock is certainly putting together a good case against us. I just got a glimpse of him going down the hall, all in black with some kind of mask over his head. That's all I saw. This intruder, you think it could have been a woman? I don't know. I didn't think about it. In other words, you wouldn't say yes, and you wouldn't say no. I'd say maybe. More than that, pal, I don't know. Mr. Collins' office is around the corner down the hall. Great, thanks a lot.
Who? Blonde woman. I didn't see anybody. Excuse me. Can I help you? I'm looking for a woman. Tall? Blonde? Not in here. Oh, sorry. Sorry. A uh, tall blonde wearing a white blouse and a dark skirt. I saw her coming out of that office there. It's got to be Lauren Kent. She was here a few minutes ago. Who is she? She worked for Alana. Doing what? Special projects like party, occasional dirty tricks, stabs in the back. Whatever Lauren Kent was doing, Alana kept secret. Well, she doesn't work for Mrs. Westbrook anymore. Now, what was she doing here? She said she had some loose ends to tie up. So do I. You know how I can find her? Well, her employment file's in the computer. That's funny. I can't bring her up. Her file's been erased. Could she have gotten her hands on one of those terminals? Well, there's another one in Mrs. Westbrook's office. She was in there. You don't think that she could have erased it herself, do you? Now, there's a thought. Did you pay her by check? She picked up her last one today, yeah. You have any of the canceled checks? The name of her bank will be stamped on the back of the check. Hello? I'm back, Ken. Good, Lauren Kent's here. Why should I talk to you now, Mr. Malansky? Either here and now, Ms. Kent, or on the witness stand under oath. Suppose I just disappear. We'll find you. And then you can explain to Lieutenant Brock what you were doing at the Westbrook mansion impersonating a police officer. My name is Lauren Kent. I'm a PI. Here's my license. I've known Alana since I was a kid. I did a couple of jobs for her and then she hired me on a permanent basis. What were you working on? She had me checking out some of her employees. Alana wasn't exactly what you'd call a trusting person. Your employer is dead. Why are you still investigating? I want to find out who killed her. You don't think it was her husband? No. For some inexplicable reason, Arthur loved her. Why do you care who it was? Two reasons. First, I have this old-fashioned idea that anyone who commits a murder should be punished. Call me crazy. And second? If I solve this case, I'll never have to hustle for another job. I'll be famous, and like Mr. Perry Mason, the jobs will come to me. Does it work that way, Ken? Look, Mr. Mason, we both believe that your client is innocent. Maybe we can help each other. Have you spoken to Harley Griswold? Why? Alana was worried about him. Seems he has a temper. Seems he's dangerous when he's crossed. <laughs> he doesn't look very dangerous. Mr. Mason... You, of all people, ought to know just how deceiving looks can really be. That's very true, Ms. Kent. Isn't that so, Mr. Malansky? 
Mason? Mr. Griswold. You're sitting at my table. Yes, I know. Won't you sit down? Sit down. Thank you. Uh, Beverly Courtney, this is the uh, famous Perry Mason who is attempting to pull dear old Arthur's bat out of the fire. Yeah. Uh, you tell us about Arthur's struggle for justice. Must be an uphill battle. All struggles are uphill. Dear Arthur has such a charming personality that I'm afraid most people would be quite happy to see him in jail, innocent or not. How about you, Mr. Griswold? Do you think he's innocent or not? Well, even if he did kill Alana, who'd blame him? She treated him badly. Very, very badly. Everybody knew it. And you? Did she treat you very badly? We had our ups and downs. Oh, Harley, you're being too kind. Why, the woman was a monster. You should have heard the way she spoke to him. I never would have put up with it. Anything further, Mr. Mason? Perhaps now is not the time. Oh, you can say anything you want in front of Beverly. God knows I always do. Go ahead, Mr. Mason. I love a little scandal. All right. Is it true you were taking large sums of money from Alana Westbrook? Who told you that? Is it true? Well, she gave me little gifts from time to time. Gifts of cash? Well, Alana was very generous. That's how you live, isn't it? Well, I, I accept the uh, generosity of uh, some of my devoted lady friends, yes. So your falling out with Alana endangered your livelihood? I... I think I should probably leave you two alone after all. Thank you, Mr. Mason, for your exquisite sense of discretion. My sense of discretion was your idea. Now, you left Alana's birthday party at about 10 o'clock. Where did you go then? Home. Which is where I'm going now. Good day, Mr. Mason. Why don't we just say au revoir? I'm sure we'll be seeing each other again. I think I got us a killer. I told Harley Griswold that I have a photo of him sneaking back into the Westbrook house the night of the party. I also told him for $10,000 I'd sell him the negative instead of giving the photo to the police. You can't do that. That's blackmail. Not really, because there isn't any photo. But if he thinks there is and he tries to buy it, we've got our man. <laughs> Perry's gonna love this. Well, it's a good thing we didn't ask his permission, isn't it? Tell me something. Are you really as tough as you act? Stick around and find out. Griswold told me that he'd get the money and he'd meet me at the Grillo Center parking lot at 10 p.m. tonight. All he's got to do is show and we've got it. Oh, oh, yes. The original idea for Ingenue was mine. We met in Switzerland 20 years ago. I was in research and development, she in marketing, for a Swiss cosmetics firm. We began working on an age-reversing skin product then. Did she bring you to America? Alana was obsessed with this research of mine. When she set her company up, she sent for me, made me her chief chemist. She'd be the first to tell you that my contribution to Ingenue was essential. Unfortunately, she isn't in a position to tell us anything. Unfortunately, no. <laughs> Twenty years I've worked on this project. 
And because my notes were destroyed, I can offer no proof of my contribution or even reconstruct the formula. Alana destroyed your notes. Weren't you worried she might use that to cut you out of your share of the profits? Alana was my friend. She always dealt honorably with me in the past. I trusted her implicitly. Even though she had the only copy of your formula in her bedroom safe? Yes. You knew that's where it was? She told me herself. A lot of Westbrook trusted me, Mr. Mason, and I trusted her. I was probably the only person at the company she did trust. What about Lauren Kent, Barbara Fox? Lauren works part-time. But are you aware that Barbara Fox and Alana had a falling out the very afternoon she took the formula home? Falling out over what? Barbara had made some bad investments and covered them with company funds. When Alana found out, she threatened Barbara's career. If you're looking for a motive, Mr. Mason, possibly you should talk to Barbara Fox. Ingenue projects millions in profits, Dr. Shell. That's plenty of motive for any number of people. Daddy's bound to have a good one, and after tonight, he's gonna need some repairs. Lori. Lori! Hey, it's breaking and entering. So Griswold tried to kill us. We're even. You coming? No! You can't do that! Watch me. manager from Schönheit Gesellschaft, and I'm leaving this message to confirm that I will be meeting your flight when you arrive here on the 19th, as per your fax. I wish you a safe journey. Goodbye. Schönheit means beauty, Gesellschaft means corporation. I know that! Griswold is meeting with someone from a Swiss cosmetic firm. Maybe he's got something to sell. What do you think? myself on my coffee. Can I take your coat away? No, I won't be staying long. I, I take it back. Purist, after my own heart. So what can I do for you, Mr. Mason? Tell me about the argument you and Alana Westbrook had the night of her party. I wouldn't really call it an argument. No? I understood she looked very angry. Well, an executive assistant either learns to take his boss's heat or he finds another job. But your relationship went far beyond work, didn't it? What do you mean? My friends have been doing a little research on your standard of living. The rent on this apartment alone is more than your monthly salary. I have investments. 
Mr. Collins, both your rent and the lease on your car have been paid by checks drawn on one of Alana's private accounts. So what's your point, Mr. Mason? That I'm a kept man? That Alana and I were lovers? More or less? Well, you're right. So what does that prove? That gives me a motive to want her alive, not dead. Yes, she paid for my rent, my car, my clothes. But now that she's dead, that's all over. Did you know you were extremely well provided for in her will? I don't have to answer that question, Mr. Mason. You don't have me on the stand yet. Oh, but I will, Mr. Collins. I will. Morning. Morning, sir. How can I help you? Looking for a Jaguar Mark II sedan, early 60s. Want to buy a classic Jag, do you? Come to the right place here. Actually, I'm looking for one in particular, a dented left front fender, a wing, you'd call it. Mind if I take a look through your service base? Wouldn't be one of them insurance blokes, would you? No, I'm an attorney. I'm working on a murder case. Name's Melansky. So? So, I can get a court order to look through your books and your service base. But why make things difficult on both of us? Bloody lawyers. Come on. Hey, huh? Is that what you're looking for? Yeah, that's it. Who does it belong to? Oh, come on, mate. There's a limit. I've got to respect the confidence of my customers. I can understand that. Mr. Griswold wants to keep this under wraps, doesn't he? If you know everything already, why ask me? Bloody lawyers. Barbara Fox. Um, my secretary told me you were waiting. I, I've been expecting a visit from you. Really? Well, ever since the head of accounting told me your Della Street was trying to get a look at the company books. You had the book sealed, Miss Fox. I was hoping I could persuade you to change your mind. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, but the company's financial records are strictly confidential. But now that Alana is dead, you must control the company funds. Uh, that's correct. Big responsibility. I can handle it. For the time being. Eventually, of course, uh, there'll be an audit. With the books closed, people could imagine you might be trying to hide something. Mr. Mason, the books are in order. Uh, I'm relieved to hear that, Ms. Fox. This is a subpoena deuces taken. It requires you to be in court tomorrow morning. It also requires your books to be there. Also, das weiß ich. Herr Messen wird Sie im Sommer, wenn er in Holland im Hag ist, anrufen. <lacht> ja, ja. Dankeschön, Herr Direktor. Auf Wiedersehen. Carl Schlusner says I need to work on my accent. Anyway, Griswold faxed him there yesterday, saying he was coming into Zurich next week in order to discuss a significant business proposition involving a new product. Unfortunately, Griswold wasn't any more specific than that. His travel agency said that Griswold faxed them two days ago, requesting a one-way ticket to Zurich on the 18th. He contacted both of them by fax. Mm -hmm. What's the problem? Well, I'd feel better if he'd spoken to them. Anyone could have sent those faxes. To implicate Griswold. Perry, he tried to kill us last night. That proves he's our man. Does it? I show you State Exhibit G. Do you recognize this shell casing? Uh, yes, it has my mark on it, and it was found in the room where Lana Westbrook was killed. 
Now, is this casing similar to the ones used by the defendant for target shooting? Yes, it was compared to other bullets found in the defendant's house. That's an exact match. Were any fingerprints found on uh, this casing? Yes, the defendant's. Uh, Lieutenant, do you have an inventory of what was taken from Mrs. Westbrook's bedroom safe? Uh, yes, we do. Several items of jewelry and an envelope containing a chemical formula for a cosmetic cream. But we found the jewelry in a mailbox down the street from the house. You mean the jewelry wasn't really stolen after all? No, it wasn't. And did you find the chemical formula too? No, we didn't. So the only thing that was stolen from Mrs. Westbrook's safe was the formula for her cosmetics cream? That is correct. Now, let's talk about the broken window in the living room. The window was broken, was it not? Yes, it was. Lieutenant, when you examined the area around the broken window, what did you observe? I discovered that there was a lot more broken glass on the windowsill outside than there was on the floor inside. Indicating what? Indicating that the window had been broken from the inside out. Meaning that whoever broke the window was already inside the house? That is correct, sir. At the time of the murder, were the servants still in the house? No, they had already returned to the gatehouse where they lived. So who was in the house? Mrs. Westbrook and the defendant, Mr. Westbrook. Your witness, Counsel. Defense has no questions, Your Honor. Witness is dismissed. Your Honor, the people call Eric Corbell. Why don't you say something? So far, there's nothing to say. And what did these arguments between the defendant and Mrs. Westbrook concern? Do you recall? Sometimes they were because he was jealous of other men, but mostly they were about money. What about money? He said that she owed him. He'd given her a fortune, and now he wanted his money back. Hmm. And what did Mrs. Westbrook say to that? She'd just laugh. Tell him he'd get his money over her dead body. Your witness, Counselor. Defense has no questions. It's impossible to put a specific dollar value on it, but conservatively speaking, I would say that the ingenue formula could be worth tens of millions of dollars. Was the defendant aware of the value of the formula, Dr. Shaw? He was at the board meeting when we first discussed it. I'm certain that he knew. Counselor, your witness. Your Honor, defense has no questions for the witness at this time. In that case, Your Honor, the people rest. Very well. Witness is dismissed. Counsel for the defense, you may call your first witness. Your Honor, uh, defense calls Harley Griswold. We ask the court's indulgence to treat Mr. Griswold as a hostile witness. The court will grant you a certain leeway, Mr. Mason. Hmm. Mr. Griswold, I'd like to direct your attention to the young lady in the second row of the spectator section. Have you ever seen her before? Yes, she came to my house the day before yesterday. And at that time, did she offer to sell you an incriminating photograph linking you to the murder of Alana Westbrook? She most certainly did not. She said she was a reporter from the National Informer and she wanted to interview me for a story on cafe society snobs. I threw her out. I can put the young lady on the witness stand if necessary. You can do what you want. It's your trial. I'm telling you the truth. What kind of car do you drive? 1961 Jaguar Mark II, 3.8 liter sedan. British racing green. Your vintage car was involved in an attempted vehicular homicide two nights ago, was it not? If you say so, it must be true. The left front fender of your car was severely damaged, was it not? Yes, it was. In fact, that car belonging to you is at Imperial Motors having that fender replaced. Is that not true? Yes, that's quite right. My Jaguar was stolen from its garage that evening. I found it the next morning, parked around the corner with just the damage you describe. You're telling us someone stole your car, smashed it up, and then returned it? Why would someone do that, sir? Well, I, I suppose someone uh, might be trying to implicate me in some way to uh, set me up 
in the language of the streets. Why didn't you report the theft and the damage to the police or to your insurance company? Well, every time I try to make a claim, they raise the rates. It's cheaper for me to pay for the repairs myself. <laughs> now, we've heard testimony about the value of the Ingenue formula. Isn't it a fair assumption that whoever murdered Mrs. Westbrook and stole that formula would be interested in selling it? Yes, I suppose so. But if you're going to ask me about that telephone call from Zurich on my answering machine, I promise you I know nothing about it. You have no plans to travel to Zurich to meet with representatives of a Swiss cosmetics concern? No, I don't. And after Alana's murder, why did you fax your travel agent and order a one-way ticket to Zurich? I didn't. Mr. Griswold, this is the fax that your travel agent received. It indicates that it came from your home. I wasn't at home at that time. Somebody must be trying to impersonate me. The same someone who stole your car? Yes. The same someone who faxed a cosmetics company in Zurich and asked for an appointment in order to discuss vital business concerns? The same someone who's trying to frame me. Yes. Do you have an alibi for the night of the murder? Or for the night that your car was involved in that accident? I was at home. No, you weren't. You left Alana Westbrook's birthday party at 10 o'clock. But according to your houseboy, you didn't arrive home until 2 a.m. Now that's four hours. Four! Where were you during those four hours, Mr. Griswold? I'm not on trial here. I don't have to furnish an alibi. The witness will answer the question. Your Honor, this is a very, very personal matter. Didn't you kill Alana, Mr. Griswold? And when Lauren Kent confronted you with proof of your guilt, didn't you try to kill her also? No. Then where were you the night Alana was killed? Oh, for heaven's sake, Harley, tell them. He was with me. Order. Order. Madam, you will be seated and you will be quiet. I was with Mrs. Courtney. Witnesses? <laughs> really, Mr. Vex, there were no witnesses. You see, I'm not quite the impotent eunuch that people like to think. Dear Mr. Courtney has allowed me to spend as much time as I want with his lovely wife under the mistaken impression that all we do is gossip and have lunch. Well, thanks to you, my cover's blown. Pity. Still, it's rather nice to be out of the closet. Mr. Mason? Mr. Mason? Your Honor, defense requests a short recess. Court is in recess for 20 minutes. All right. Lawrence set us up. Find her. Mr. Collins, is it not true that you and Alana were lovers? Objection. Irrelevant. Overruled. Yes, we were lovers. And when her husband found out about us, he threatened to kill her. Your Honor, may we mark these photographs for identification as defendants next in order? Yes, they may be marked collectively as defendants exhibit C. Thank you. Now, Mr. Collins, you say you were Alana's lover. Yes. Would you identify these photographs, please, Mr. Collins? They're pictures of me with a friend of mine. 
a young female friend, and the nature of the friendship is quite clear. Now, Alana was given those photographs on her birthday, was she not? You argued with her over those photographs, did you not? Yes. She was upset. What was she going to do, Mr. Collins? Nothing. Nothing? Nothing. To make certain she did nothing, you got rid of her. Objection. Defense is badgering his own witness and attempting to introduce speculation as to motive when there's not a shred of evidence linking Mr. Collins to this crime. Sustained. Mr. Mason, that is enough. Now, do you have any more questions for this witness? Just one, Your Honor. Mr. Collins, did you kill Alana Westbrook? No. Mr. Mellers? No further questions, Your Honor. Witness is dismissed. Court is in recess. One hour for lunch. All rise. Damn it. Why didn't you let it? Just leave her alone. Leave her alone. I told you. Court. Court. Bailiff, separate those two men. I don't want to go out with you anymore. Now I'm going away. Can't you just accept oh, that's that? that's cute. Real cute. You are the lady. Now be mature. Hey, you're totally getting the wrong... <laughs> you okay, Miss Kemp? I am now. What you... Thanks, Eduardo. I want to testify, Perry. I want to tell him the truth. Whose truth, Arthur? Yours or the prosecution's? The truth. I loved Alana. I, I could never have killed her. You were never angry at her? Oh, we had a disagreement. But... Because she was seeing another man. Scott Collins never mattered to her. She left him a small fortune from money you gave her. Well, it was her business. But your money, you must have hated her. No. But she betrayed you, made you look like a fool. Damn it, no. No, she didn't betray you or no, you weren't a fool. Just shut up. Will you shut up? Now, that's why I won't let you testify. I'm sorry, Arthur. I know you didn't enjoy that. But I had to make you understand. The prosecution will play on your temper and make you look like a man out of control. Capable of any crime. The least of which is murder. My God, Barry, what are we going to do? Hey, I thought I told you to take a hike. Now we're even. God caught you. Listen, I thought you should know your boyfriend was up in your apartment. I don't know what he was looking for. I do. Thanks, Eduardo. Operator, I need to make another call using my credit card. The number I'm calling is 303-555-555-4128. Thank you. Yeah, it's me. We got trouble. I think that Laurie Melansky's gonna follow me here. Here, Porterville. I don't know, I think he broke into my apartment and I'm sure he found something that's gonna lead him down here. Well, I'm headed back to the house right now, but I'm afraid he's gonna follow me there. 
Yeah, I can do that. What road is that? Yeah, I can do that too. Now, I'll make sure he's behind me when I get there. from Denver. Guess you get a lot of cars pulling in here running on empty, huh? A friend of mine was driving up this way. I was wondering maybe if she filled up here. Tall blonde lady, good looking. Did you see her? Guess not. You take credit cards? Great. You got a restroom? Great. Why don't you pop the hood and check the oil? My name's Molansky. I'm an attorney working on a murder case, and this lady, Lauren Kent, is a crucial witness. I need to find her. Now, she was here. You must have seen her. A tall, blonde, good-looking lady. In a town like this, she'd be hard to miss. Really? All right, I'll tell you what. You tell me where she is, and I'll make it worth your while. 20 bucks. Now, where is she? 20 bucks with gas and oil. I ain't seen no woman. Great. Anybody ever tell you you talk too much? 20 bucks, I gotta get somewhere. WJ, watch the shop. I'll be back in a few minutes. Is this some kind of game to you?
Perry. Ken, I can barely hear you. Where are you? Porterville. Where's Arthur? He said he was going home. Why? Perry, listen. Lauren Kent was shot and killed this afternoon. The Porterville police did a complete ballistics test on the bullets they found, and they were definitely fired from the same gun that killed Alana Westbrook. I think Arthur killed them both. Ken, that just can't be so. Well, then where is he? It was his gun and his bullets, and he had a lot to gain getting Alana and Lauren out of the way. Perry, I just don't want you going out on a limb on this. Look, Ken, once I was your lawyer. I believed in you the way I believe in Arthur. Now do this for me, Ken. Ken, are you there? Yeah. Alana Westbrook was raised in Porterville. Find out where she lived, who remembers her when she was a child. Find out what relative she has there. Get back to me as soon as... Perry? Ken? Ken? your house until 11 last night. Now, where were you? I panicked. I got in the car and just drove. I must have driven a couple hundred miles. Something wrong? Yes. Lauren Kent is dead. All rise. The Denver County Court is now in session. Judge Eleanor Harrelson presiding. Be seated. You may call your first witness, Mr. Mason. Uh, may I have a moment, Your Honor? Very well. Lauren's dead. She was murdered. We're waiting for more news from Ken. Where is he? I'm not sure. What's he doing? I'm not sure of that either. Lauren betrayed you, Arthur. I just hope Ken found something to... Mr. Mason. Uh, Your Honor, some new evidence has been found. I'd like to recall Dr. William Shaw, but I'd also like to take a short time to go over this evidence. Court will be in recess 15 minutes. That short enough, Mr. Mason? I don't know why you're asking me these questions. I had no reason to kill Alana. You and Alana Westbrook developed the Ingenue formula together, is that right? To be honest, Alana dealt with marketing and public relations. I developed the formula. We started 20 years ago when we worked together in Europe. And Mrs. Westbrook used herself as a guinea pig for Ingenue under your guidance, is that true? Yes. How long had she used the formula, Doctor? I believe she had used an experimental version for quite some time. Dr. Shell. How old was Alana Westbrook? I don't know. Now, I gave you two envelopes. Would you look into envelope number one, please? Now, that is the birth certificate Alana Westbrook showed to the press to prove she was 62. Do you recognize it? Yes. Now, envelope number two, please. That is another birth certificate, one which was found in the house of a woman named Lauren Kent. To whom does it belong? Alana Westbrook. According to the birth date on that certificate, how old was Alana Westbrook when she died? Forty. How old? Forty. And Ingenue never changed her appearance, did it, Doctor? Her appearance was always miraculous, wasn't it? She was very beautiful, yes. And you... You were in love with her. Mr. Mason. 
Yes, I loved her. Dr. Shelm, if Alana was only 40 and the face cream had not changed her appearance, then the whole thing was a charade, almost fraudulent. No, it was not a fraud. The cream just wasn't ready yet. Alana said that she could no longer afford to wait for us. She was deeply in debt. So, Lauren Kent planted that counterfeit birth certificate and those false records. It was Lauren's idea and Alana's. They said it would take the public years to realize that Ingenue didn't work. I tried to stop them. You see, Mr. Mason, <laughs> the cream really was great. The formula was almost ready. Germany, Dr. Schell, Germany. Isn't it true your father changed your family name when he and your mother moved out of Germany? Our name used to be Schellenberg. Your grandfather, Gustav Schellenberg, was a renowned marksman. He passed that skill on to your father, who then taught it to you, isn't that correct? As a matter of fact, you were a greater marksman than Arthur Westbrook. I was considered by some to be an expert marksman, yes. Your Honor, I'm momentarily through with this witness, but I reserve the right to recall him. I now call W.J. Cronkite to the stand. Mr. Cronkite, you were the one who helped Mr. Melansky find his way to Lauren Kent's house that first time, is that correct? Yes. You also helped him find all the evidence he just brought into court. Yes, I did that, and uh, I sure hope it wasn't against the law. Oh, I think you're in the clear. Now, Mr. Cronkite, you also overheard a long-distance telephone call made by Lauren Kent at the Porterville gas station. Could you tell us about that? Well, I, I don't remember at all, but... Uh, she said she was going to make sure that Melansky followed her up some road in his car. And that he was going to be right behind her when she got there. Sure sounded like something bad was going to happen. You know who she was calling? No, I don't know that. But I remember the number. Uh, our phone's in terrible shape. It's kind of old. And she had to get a hold of the operator to get her call. I uh, jotted down the number. I, I got it right here. Uh, Your Honor, I'd like that telephone number introduced as Defense Exhibit D. Thank you, Mr. Cronkite. You've been very helpful. I now recall Dr. William Schell. Dr. Schell. Defense Exhibit D is a telephone number called by Lauren Kent from the Porterville service station. Now, that number, 303-555-4128, is your telephone number, is it not? Yes. So, it had to be you that directed Lauren Kent to drive up that mountain road, to be followed by Ken Melansky. Yes. Only you had the knowledge that they were on that road, and you are an excellent marksman, Dr. Shell. She betrayed you, both you and Alana. You couldn't let her get away with that, could you? Is that why you killed her? She deserved it. The woman you loved. Did she deserve to be killed? We were happy in Switzerland. I was in love with her. I would have done anything for her, anything. I created the formula for her. Ambitious. She was so ambitious. She left me, went to the United States, and married him. I was never the same, Mr. Mason. I was devastated. When she called, asked me to be her chief chemist. I couldn't say no. I could never say no. I couldn't say no to being with her. And then she stole the formula. 
I was never to see her again. Can you imagine? I would have given her anything. She didn't need to do that. I loved her. I still do. But you killed her. Mr. Mason? Yes, I did. I killed her. Your Honor? The people have no objection to a dismissal of all charges, Your Honor. So ordered. Bailiffs, place Dr. Shell under arrest. Court is adjourned. Congratulations. so much that's funny how things can change she wasn't a very good person was she maybe i'm not much better you know Perry, you can't imagine what it means to me that you stuck by me that's what old friends are for yeah old friends thank you Fifth one in less than an hour. Reminds me of a day in the Columbia with my grandfather. Fish were jumping into the boat. Uh, you know, it's a shame Della hasn't caught anything yet. Last time she won the tournament, and today she can't even get a bite. We're just better fishermen. Don't you think so, Della? I think if you'd untie my hands, things would be different. No, oh, ma'am, we like things just the way they are. <laughs> Whoa, got another one. So do I. When we get back to shore, you're both doomed. <laughs> <laughs>